You can download the art seen in the video for free, link in the description. For a custom health bar, create a new scene with a progress bar as the root. Double click and rename it to custom health bar. Disable show percentage and change the step to 0.001. Go to layout, then transform. We'll set the scale to 0.2 by 0.2. This is needed for a smooth animation when we change the value of the health bar. Otherwise, it'll look like the bar is lagging because it'll be snapping to pixels. Then we'll set the size to 80 by 10. I'll set the position to negative 8 by 11. Scroll down and go to theme overrides. Select styles. For background, set it to a style box flat and select the style box flat to edit it. Disable draw center. Change the border color to white and set the border width to be 5 on all sides. Go to expand margin and expand the margin by 10 on all sides. As for fill, add another style box flat and select it. Go to the background color and change it to a red color. I'm using FF004B. While the health bar is selected, add another progress bar. Disable show percentage and go to layout, transform, and set its size to 80 by 10. Then drag this green anchor point to the bottom right. This will make it so that whenever we resize the parent custom health bar node, it will appropriately resize this progress bar as well. Next, go down to theme overrides and go to styles. Set the background to a style box empty. Set the fill to a style box flat. Select it and change the background color to white. Scroll down and go to visibility and enable show behind parent. Then add a timer. Rename it to reset visibility and enable one shot. We use the timer to hide the health bar after a certain amount of time has passed and no damage has occurred. Save the scene and add a script to the custom health bar. In the script, we'll first establish the class name as custom health bar. This will make it so that when we are adding a node to the scene, we can type custom health bar and this node will show up as a customly made one, essentially creating our own node within our game. We will then establish two variables, which would house our tweens, one for the value of the progress bar and another for the opacity. We will then create three custom functions, one for setting up the health bar, one for changing the value of the health bar, and one for changing the opacity of the health bar. Inside of the setup, we will set opacity to zero so that the health bar is invisible, which is modulate.a. We use modulate instead of changing the visibility property, so that way we can have a smooth transition between being invisible and visible. We will use the function's built-in variable to set the value and max value of both the custom health bar and its child progress bar. Inside of the change opacity function, we will check if the tween for opacity is already running. If so, then we will stop it by calling the kill function. This will allow us to replace the previous tween animation. Then we establish the tween and call the tween property. Inside the tween property, we grab self, which is the custom health bar. Then we set its modulate dot a to the built-in variable for this function and we make the tween animation run for 0.12 seconds finally i add set trans sign so that the tween's animation is less linear and less robotic for the change value function we will first set the opacity to 1.0 by calling the change opacity function you will notice here that putting 1.0 in the brackets it will set the function's built-in new amount variable to 1.0 next if you want you can add this line to wait for the custom health bar to be fully visible before you continue however i don't like how it looks so i use a hashtag to comment out this line this stops the line from running but allows me to add it back by removing the hashtag. Next, we'll set the custom health bar's value to the new value built in function variable. If you want the animation seen at the start of the video, we will need to tween the progress bar child to reach the same value as the value we just set. First, we check if change value tween is already active and running. If so, we can use the kill function to stop it. This will allow us to replace the previous animation. Next, we establish the tween and tween the property of the value on the progress bar child. We grab the child and then we grab its value property. Then we make the target value the new value built in function variable. Then we make the animation last for 0.3 five seconds and I add a custom transition of sign to make the animation look a little better. Finally, we need to reset the visibility of the health bar after it's finished its animation. We can do this by connecting this tween's finish signal to the timer start function. This will make the tween activate the timer once the tween has been completed. Doing it this way will also ensure that the timer can't activate or complete during the middle of a new change value call, ensuring that the custom health bar remains visible every time the value is changed. To finish this script, go to the timer and select node, then go to signals, double click timeout and connect it. We'll call the change opacity function with a value of 0.0. .0. Keep in mind that if you want the custom health bar to linger for a little bit longer after it has been changed, then all you need to do is change the timer's wait time. Save the scene and make sure you save the script as well. Now, to add this to any of our enemies within our game, go to the scene that you want to add the health bar to. Drag and drop the custom health bar scene. You can move it around and reposition it however you like. Now go to your enemy script. Inside, we will only need two variables, one that grabs the health bar node and another that will store the amount of health that the enemy currently has. Now select on the enemy and assign the health bar node. Inside the ready function for the enemy, grab the health bar node and run its setup function, passing the health of the enemy as the starting value of the health bar. In my script, I'm using a button with zero opacity to detect when the player is clicking the enemy to deal damage, which means that the location for all my code for dealing damage and updating the health bar will be inside my button press signal. However, you may have a custom function like take damage 
or something like that. All you need to do is change the health variable by the amount of damage that you want to deal. Then I grab the health bar and call the change value function with the health variable as the new value. Keep in mind that you can use this line anywhere within the script that you want to change the value of the health bar. Also, for changing the health bar and setting it up, you do not need to use a variable for the health. You can just pass a simple number. You do not need to use an export variable to grab the health bar. All you simply need to do is grab the health bar's path and use the function. I'm just using an export variable as in the case that I moved the custom health bar around in my scene tree, I don't have to rewrite the path. 